Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes. You're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today is episode 120. Today is actually the first episode that we have ever videoed. And so now if you go on to the YouTube channel, you can actually watch me recording this live on YouTube. But for today, I want to, I want to say a big thank you to our episode sponsor, which is FreshBooks. And this is their last uh, week that they are offering us a great offer over at freshbooks.com slash bootcamp and if you go there you can get a free month of using their software completely free and you don't even have to give them their credit card and I've talked so about so many things about FreshBooks and why it is so powerful and why I recommend it so much and we use it for pretty much everything we started our landscaping business so for our landscaping business I use a very specific type of software which we talk about on landscapebusinesscourse.com called Lawn Pro. However, for every other service-based business and if you're self-employed and you need cloud accounting software, which by the way is every single person that's self-employed, definitely FreshBooks is what you want to be going for. FreshBooks.com slash bootcamp. The new software design that they have, they put out a couple weeks ago, is just totally awesome. And its integration on mobile, on their mobile, is really, really great. So if you have an iPhone or something, it just terrific the app and the integration that they've worked on there. So that is that. Make sure you check it out, freshbooks.com slash bootcamp. Now today, we are doing a Q&A, and it's a very unique Q&A. Uh, but like I said, this is our first episode that we've ever done live video. So literally right now, if you went on to the video stream on YouTube, you'd see right now that I have my iPhone out. And I'm in my still in my work clothes, and it's 9 p.m., because uh, I got back to the office, and it's a Saturday evening. Uh, so you definitely want to check out YouTube, and it's not like it's super interesting. I'm not going to edit the videos a whole lot. I'm uh, just going to essentially put a camera up when I am uh, recording these videos, or recording the podcast, I should say. But for some people, it just they like it better if they can see a face and see a mouth and someone actually doing something. And for some people out there, all they've ever heard is my voice, and they've asked to kind of see a little bit more of my face. So that's kind of cool. Um, I don't expect to get huge amounts of YouTube subscribers from just my face, but it's just it's just another channel that people can uh, learn from, and uh, I hope it's useful. You can put it up while you're working or something like in, in your background on YouTube. And really, my focus is trying to find millennial millionaires and millennial business people uh, and help millennials become small business owners. And so YouTube is where I find my my news. And, and like I don't really go online very much to find my my source of news and you know what happened in the election and what happened in the debate and the biggest sport event. Like I go to YouTube and so I think a lot of millennials do that and so I'm just trying to find millennials in those places that they're going to and YouTube I think is kind of where their attention is right is at right now and so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on that and so definitely check it out on the YouTube the channel now because we have video this is kinda cool because we have video now uh, on the YouTube channel I want you to actually send your questions via video through Facebook through uh, your email if you have to but through Facebook um, what's crazy is literally I just have to set up a new Facebook page uh, we used to have one. It was like at Business Bootcamp Podcast. That was our our Facebook handle. Uh, they literally blocked me out of my account. I have no idea why. I've tried to contact them. They won't let me log in. It says like this is not your personal account, and the reason is because I never use a personal account for Facebook. I just use it for the podcast, and so they like locked me out. It was the craziest thing, and I'm trying to get in contact and try to fix this. But so far, like it was weird. Like it went took my followers down to like thirty just change my whole page so if you're gonna go on Facebook and you look for business bootcamp podcast don't select or don't you know follow the page that has our red our old logo the red one with the like black silhouette of the guy look for the orange logo that says business bootcamp that matches the the current uh, vibe and design on the, on the on our website the orange one with the picture of me on it that's the one you want to follow and I can't even make it an and uh, like a, a a short handle for us, like at because I'm gonna change it to like at the Biz Podcast because that's our our Twitter handle. <sighs> it's just so frustrating. Um, but if you search Business Bootcamp Podcast, you will see the new designed logo for the podcast. It's the orange one. Okay, follow that page, and if you have a question, you will almost undoubtedly right now get onto the show if you leave a video 
through the Facebook channel. You can leave it through Twitter, but I think Twitter's kind of just really noisy right now. I don't really like the direction that Twitter's going, and it's just, I don't know, like, if you send it on Facebook, I'm going to get it. On Twitter, there's just too much going on. I, I think there's, so there's some problems, I think, with Twitter right now. And so, let's do Facebook. If you have Facebook, go on to their Search Business Bootcamp podcast. Uh, look for the orange logo, not the old red one. I'm at like zero followers right now because I literally just made this page. So, go on there. Once it gets to 30, I'll make sure I have the, the, the handle is at, at, the, at the biz podcast. At the Biz Podcast, uh, as our as our handle there. But uh, send me a video, so like just like put it, take up your phone. Uh, let's see here, and uh, just go right right like this. And now I'm talking to a video camera, so you listen to the podcast. Like, what is he doing? Uh, but just take a selfie of yourself asking uh, a question, and I want to do that so that I can get make the videos a little more entertaining by getting someone else's face on here other than my own. So if you can send a video. Keep it under 60 seconds, please, uh, and that'd be great. So today's question comes from Caleb, and Caleb is the president of ChainSocietyDiscs.com. That's ChainSocietyDiscs, as in D-I-S-C-S dot com. And he wrote a very, very long email, but I'm going to kind of shorten it up. And as we go through it, I'm going to make some comments uh, Caleb wrote in, he wrote an email, yes, an email, and he kind of talks about, you know, saying that next podcast, found out he was an entrepreneur, all of that. I'm going to start reading, though, about what he actually, his question is, and we, we, him and I went kind of back and forth on some stuff later on, on some emails, but I'm going to read you kind of his first one and what, really what his question was about, and then uh, I'll dive in. So, he said... I am an avid disc golfer. I have a very strong passion in the sport, and I believe it is the next big recreational sport to blow up into a much higher regarded professional level sport. With that being said, I started a club that quickly turned into a business for me and a friend. We had developed the organization having over 1,700 members across all of Texas. We currently live in the fastest growing demographic for disc golf, courtesy of PDGA.com, as our organization developed, it became apparent that we had started something great. There was another local retailer that was our immediate competition, but with my natural entrepreneurial skills, we ran them out of business and without even having a store. It was pretty apparent that we had what they didn't, and it was a voice within the target market. I had a vision of opening our own store and was told we couldn't do it within the five-year plan I had set for myself, but accomplished it in six months. We are nearing our open date. October 2nd, 2016, which uh, is tomorrow, because today's October 1st, that's me. Uh, but I have a major concern, Caleb says. We currently use Weebly for our website host, and it was done extremely poorly. When in person, I feel like I can almost always... Sorry, here, let me start that again. When in person, I feel like I can almost always execute the sale by finding the need and satisfying it within our products for the customer, but at that point, they are not buying from me. But at that point, they are buying from me as a product as well. I designed the entirety of our website at ChainSocietyDisc.com, but we haven't executed hardly any sales. I just shared our website on our Facebook page and we received 600 views in one day, but none of those converted to sales. We just paid a lot of money to have the website published, but I'm getting discouraged as this has been the case since we started the website almost three months ago. I currently have a salary position as an, as an estimator. I don't know what exactly his job uh, is in, but he says he's an estimator, Caleb says. I currently have a salary position as an estimator, and I do not want to be here much longer, as I can't stand being told what to do. Although the salary is well worth me maintaining my current lifestyle of hosting two jobs, I have a family and a personal life I would like to maintain as well. How do I get to where I can quit my day job? Four question marks. <laughs> I would love to make Chinese Society Disc LLC to my primary source of income, but we haven't opened our store and our website is doing very poorly in my opinion. Please help me develop my current entrepreneurial skills and business. Any recommendations on books for small retail business? Anything? Lots of question marks and exclamation marks. Thanks for reading. Your biggest fan, Caleb Jones. Alright, so Caleb, a few things. Um, I have a very, very different opinion on retail. Very different opinion. And if you're wise or watching the video, some of you are probably thinking a few things right now. Number one, I look very young, younger than you thought. 
if you haven't seen me before. Um, and number th two thing is you, you see that I fidget with things a lot. I always have pens and I'm always picking up my phone and fidgeting. Um, whatever. That's what I do. So, anyways. Caleb, um, I have a very different opinion on retail. I think retail's dead. Completely dead. Um, or not, sorry. It's not completely dead. It's dying. And it's going to be dead in our lifetime. That's my opinion. And so, when you talk about retail, that scares me. Because if you haven't been successful on your website... You say, well, you know, I'm, we're going to be a retail retailer business. Now, with retail comes a lot of pride for small business owners. When you have, uh, and I'm not saying pride is a bad thing. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's really cool and awesome to have uh, a retail store where you can walk in and you have like real countertops and real computers and you have real customers walking in the door and you have real traffic outside the doors and your family and you can bring your friends and it's like really cool and you feel happy that you own a business and it really feels like you're a business owner when you have a retail store um but you have to realize that you're getting on a sinking ship when you get into retail you are on the retail ship called the titanic a massive re and it's going down like jc penny macy's um, all these massive retailers, Sears, Sports Authority, like you name it, they all are being weighed down by the fact that they are on the sinking ship of retail. And for the retailers that will not adapt, they will continue to sink. There are retailers that have successfully figured out how to adapt and change in the environment, in the current market, to market to millennials and to do things on social and to do things on their website and integrate that with their store buying, retailing, hard asset, physical locations uh, in their retail stores. Uh, some people have figured it out. Most people haven't when it comes to retail. And most retailers, like I said, will become non-existent or will be replaced within our lifetime. Um, and when I say our lifetime, Caleb, I'm assuming you're a millennial, 20s and 30s, right in their 40s. Although you have a family, so maybe 40s, whatever, that's fine. But you're still it's still in your lifetime, like 30, 40 years. I don't believe you're going to see outlet, outlet malls popping up. You're not going to see new malls being built, that's for sure. Um, it's going to be completely different. They're going to be smaller footprint because re real estate is going to become more, much more expensive. Uh, and so the footprint of the retail stores is going to get much smaller. Robots or technology, just technology, let's just say technology, not robots, but technology is going to replace so many jobs in the retail environment. And the people that win in retail are going to be the ones that, one, can adapt to the technolo technological changes in marketing. So that's like the people who can adapt to social and video and creating content, okay? And integrating their brand with the personal life of their consumer and not just being a place where you walk in and get utility, utilitarian value from them. They, you, don't, they, you don't just go to the retailer to, because you need a shirt or you need shoes, for utility, because you need shoes. You don't go there for that, and the ones that are gonna succeed are the ones that are going to think outside of that box of utility and start thinking in terms of how do we uh, how, how do we integrate our brand and what we're all about with the actual life of our consumers and, and really get to know them on a personal level through social, uh, through interactions with employees when they come into the store, and figuring that out. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk t talks a lot about this, uh, and so th th it's it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. Retail is gonna shift big time, and with the rate the rise of of the labor market and how much it's co it costs to employ people, you're gonna, just gonna see technology just begin to replace these jobs. So I'm am ju just kind of went off on a tangent there, but I'm, all I'm saying is retail is a sinking ship, and ChangeSocietyDisc.com which, if no one missed it, is about disc golf, which I have only played for fun, never, like, competitively. But disc golf 
is an online niche, in my opinion, Caleb. In my opinion. I do not believe that without a massive following, you can create a sustainable retail location for disc golf. Now, by the time you hear this, your store is already open. So, first of all, I think that's kind of... It, you, you might have jumped the gun a little bit early. I'm not saying, like, I hate saying calling people that, that they're wrong, because I, I love you, for you to prove me wrong, Caleb, on this one, okay? But in my opinion, now I'm going to tell you how retail, I believe, should be done. Retail should be a second aspect of your business. So what I mean by that is you should already have a service business or you should already have an internet-based business selling products already before you get into retail space. Before you actually get a physical location, you should have a, a service-based business that you then use the retail location, but then you also use it for like office administration for the service business. So that's what we did with our lawn care and landscaping business. We did the service end, we could generate enough sales with that, generated generated a good business in the, in the service part, and then we're like, well, let's get into the retail where we started to uh, deliver mulch, deliver soil, deliver gravel. We got into that space, and um, when we got into that space, but we already had the service end of things that to anchor the business, and so then we just used the office location in the retail area to do the office work for the service part of the business. And so I really believe that that's, that's number one. Number two, when you should get into retail, is is uh, when you already have an internet business that is generating so many sales and you need a physical location to do like packaging, which by the way isn't even really necessary because there's this little company called Amazon that can do this stuff for you. However, if you are creating your own products you could use your retail location as, yes, a storefront, but then have a back end where you're doing fulfillment and you're doing uh, you know, research and development or you're doing design work for t-shirts or whatever you're, you're making for product stuff. Um, or even if you're creating software and you're selling widgets, you know, and, but then you have some sort of retail thing that you could do. So I think sometimes even if you need an office, you can create that into a retail environment. So, you, hey, if you've got to have an office, why not have 10% of it become retail? you make some money off of this thing, right? And get some people coming through the door. And so that's why we, we did with our service business. So I think retail's changing, and I think the only reason you should really start a retail location is if one, you have a service end of your component of your business where you already need like an office space anyways, and you can just make that into retail and then kind of test the market. Or two, you have this internet-based internet business where you're selling products or whatever, um, and then you either need office space or you need fulfillment center or you need a storage or something that you can then turn into retail. I don't think, I do not believe that niche, niche, however you want to say it, those markets, I don't believe they're going to thrive in a retail environment. They can thrive online by creating content, by creating a tribe around that niche. So if you have 1,700 members, Caleb, in of members around Texas that, that that think of you as the expert in disc golf. You need to get all 1,700 people emails, which you probably already have, get them on a list, get them, get them in your site, get them creating, you should be creating content, you should be creating uh, contests, you should be creating leagues, you should become the go-to guy for disc golf. And get outside of Texas by using something called the internet. So if you can get 1,700 members in Texas, t extrapolate that across the 50 states of the U.S. Maybe if you could even get 25 or 30,000 people around the U.S. to get on your site to learn. Like you could have different stages like beginner, intermediate, and advanced disc golf techniques. You could literally create courses around that. You could have free ones just to drive traffic and get people's emails on, on your site. Then you could have paid ones that you could end up making money from that, okay? Then, once you create 25,000, 30,000 people and you have leagues and you, you have meetups and you have courses and you have live people creating classes of how to play disc golf, you become the expert. Your brand becomes the expert. Once that happens, then you can create a retail environment.
then you can really succeed in creating some swag and making shirts and and and, and making even just being to make a team in the league you gotta pay like that's that's where the money's at it, it's i promise you it's not in selling frisbees it's just not and so a lot of times people when they think retail they think products they think of like tangible goods when they're missing out on the the entire community in that space and so that's why like with lawn care landscape when we i just created landscapebusinesscourse.com and we just had our first webinar yay uh it went really good and so we're starting to sell that and looking forward to actually launching the videos right now we're still pre-selling uh and so big shout out to everyone that's already bought into it and he's got an amazing discount and what i'm doing is i'm taking my expertise eight ten years of grinding in this business and teaching other people caleb you have probably developed a lot of skills whether it be business and and your passion for disc golf you can combine those two things and create a following online make money online eventually with courses and whatever i don't care what you do um there's so many ways to do it. I, don't, I mean i don't care i'm just saying there's so many ways you can do it. And I think courses in this regard is a great way. You, sh you can give free ones to get people, give it as, do it as a lead magnet to get people into your site and get, get lots of uh, email addresses of people that are at least interested in disc golf. And then you have advanced stuff where people learn like the really nitty gritty. You have three different levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced techniques. Get, get like great disc golf athletes on your site interview them have them show their best techniques have a video them and make a youtube channel with 25 or 30 thousand emails uh, uh emails on your list you can easily create a really thriving youtube channel around that and you become the authority that's not going to be this is the problem retail you can open it up today and have customers an hour later at least customers i'm not saying you're profitable i'm just saying you generate revenue with a podcast, with a blog, with a YouTube channel, with creating a course, it can take months and years to generate that type of tribe, that type of audience, and finally begin to see the, the fruits of your labor in the form of money. Um, but you won't go negative like you will when you try going into the retail business. I would love, Caleb, for you to tell me that I am wrong. And for you to come back on the show in two years and say, no, I crushed it in retail. We made six figures our first year. You were wrong, Mike. But I do think, I'm not saying you're sunk now, Caleb. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is perhaps you can use this retail environment to channel your resources into different areas. Online, social, through this uh, pdga.com, This all these members that you have that are following you and that you're an authority around start to I think you can really start to mine that and think outside of Texas think outside your demographic by using the internet that's the power of the internet that's what makes it so powerful and you can use it to make an incredible amount of uh, a following around what you do so that's it so that's it for today episode 120 here on the business boot camp podcast Man, remember go to YouTube on the channel you can now watch this show all I'm doing is sitting behind a mic, which, by the way, I think I need to zoom out. I think I need to zoom out uh, so you can see my hands. But anyways, take it out on the YouTube channel. You can just see my mouth if you really want to see me record myself into a microphone. But you can see what I'm doing. It's super simple. I'm literally, like, in my pajamas or my work clothes or, like, I'm just, like, chilling out. So ch check that out. But more importantly, go into Facebook and search Business Bootcamp Podcast. Look for the orange logo. Because the old one, remember, is trash, garbage. For some reason, Facebook won't let me get to it because my old account, I would never use it for personal, and they said that's illegal, and they wouldn't let me sign in. It was a big whatever, and I'm, I, I don't even want to deal with it anymore. So I just created a new site as of like 20 minutes ago. So um, look for that. Send a video with asking your question on how to start, grow, or save your business. Make sure you put your link to your website in there. Say, like, I am from www mybusiness.com and so that people can like see what you're doing and we can track what you're doing I, I keep track of so many of the people that come on here and ask questions and little do you know I come in and check on you in a few months and I'm like did they do what I said so make sure you do that 
check it out, businessbootcamppodcast.com. Remember, too, to check out our sponsors link that they've given us. Try out their software. It's freshbooks.com slash bootcamp. You won't regret it. You've got to get online with all of your accounting, all of your marketing efforts, and your CRM customer keeping all of their information. Do it today. This is Mike Annie's Business Bootcamp Podcast, episode 120, signing off.